All right, here we are, finally. The review. First of all, a little bit of housekeeping. I have to say I'm a wee bit disappointed with you all because I put a lot of work and a lot of love and a lot of effort into those videos explaining his chart positionings and how 1999 broke through to the mainstream. And I'm very disappointed to see that both videos still have less than 20 views after three days and they're by far my worst performing videos. So what's wrong with you guys? Don't you like facts or something? Seriously, it pays to expand your brain power. You know, go and watch them. They're very interesting and they're all integral to part of this whole series. 19 views is an embarrassment. I've seen nerds, you know, sing um, Aria Grande songs with more views than that. Now, 1999, the review. Okay, let's show you what the album looks like. This is what the cover looks like. This is the back with the lyrics from 1999 written on it and the song listings. Now, there was actually a seven song version that came out that which actually eliminated several songs. It eliminated DMSR, Automatic, um, All the Critics Love You in New York, and um, International Lover, which is quite bizarre, eh? So, um, I only had seven songs, and that was actually quite a big hit um, outside of the um, Big Prince world. Okay, here's what the covers like. Of course, you've got that dirty Mac, but that is a great classic image, you know, captured the posterity showing up. Um, Prince and the band, you know, the steam around the guitar. I just love the way how his hand's hanging lowly over that guitar. It's just the epitome of cool, you know, and the purple is just the signs that the whole purple revolution has arrived, basically. And speaking of revolutions, for the first time ever, Prince is referring to his backing group as the revolution. It's written on the cover, Prince and the revolution, basically. And you've got lyric sheets here, basically. Of course, all the more salacious lyrics are on, basically cut out like let's pretend we married you not see the bit about fucking the taste out of someone's mouth basically and we are going to talk about all those salacious songs and of course this one you know the neon hearts and the steam he just looks like a sexy salamander basically it's hilarious and you wonder what he's going to paint i don't think he's in the mood for painting or um sleeping on that bed that's for damn sure and don't you think you can just see a whole lot of butt here yeah all right that's enough more fooling around let's review this shit and it ain't shit believe you me we're going to review it in the order of the it's an amazing song, basically. That's how the album opens up with um, 1999, which is Prince's great bop against the bomb polymer. Basically, bombs are falling everywhere. They better not harm your silky hair. Sorry, I couldn't resist saying that, you know. And um, instead of getting angry about it, what Prince wants to do, instead of like in the earlier songs, he was talking about fighting your own war and everything and um, party up. He wants to party. And not only does he want to party, he's got a lion in his pocket and baby, he's ready to roar. And um, it's just an incredible song from the first notes, you know, going, I don't want to hurt you. I only want to have some fun. And it's Prince in the slowed down voice. It's just absolutely clever. It's easily one of the most brilliant songs ever written. I mean, I know I talked to her about Contrast, about how um, the first three cuts of that album were just absolutely blinders, you know. But And I said there was only possibly three other songs on an album that could be bigger blinders, and that's 1999. 1999 is an anthemic song. It's got some amazing funk bass running through it, amazing guitar work. Good, it's got the Lynn machine anchoring everything, and it's got that beautiful three-part vocal, which I just absolutely love. I think most of us love it. You know, it starts off with Lisa singing the first line going, and I woke up this morning, you know, and then you've got Des coming and going, Curtis Swan was Judgment Day, and then in comes Prince. On the video, he comes in, he grabs the mic off the loose hook, he goes, and he goes, the sky was so purple, there were people running, and everybody here is throwing his hair and his eyes. Straight away, a lot of white people and even other people's first look of Prince they saw that they knew this guy was an iconic performer. This would not be the last from this guy. This song was blown away. I mean, the reason why the song hit was because it had just had such a great pop melody to it, but it was a wonderful song. I love the part where he's like going, 2000, zero, zero, baby, over out of time. So tonight I'm going to party like it's 1999. It's just amazing. I love the song. I mean, I could sit here for hours and hours going on about how great the song 1999 is. Again, there's two versions. There's an edited version which cuts out like the funk sort of breakdown in the middle at the end. And I mean, seriously, funk-wise, the, the playing in the song, I know it's a pop song and it's one of his pop hits. The funk playing it, though, the ding, 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 that riff, I love it. That is a classic funk riff. It's underpinning the whole Minneapolis sound. It's, it, the song has just got everything. I mean, Prince just threw in the kitchen sink and basically brought out the sparkling water. That's what the song is. It's lightning in a bottle. I know it's a cliche, but honestly, 1999. It's one of my favourite songs. I say one of my favourite. Any other Prince album would be my favourite song, but 1999 just has so many brilliant songs on it. You just cannot pin it down to one song, basically. That's 1999. Now, and of course the funny part at the end with the child's go, Mommy, 
Why does everybody have a bomb? Dang, dang. There's that, that bass loop jangling for again. And of course, when I grew up in Christchurch, you know what I mean? We had some pretty dumb DJs who played, and I remember one going, oh, that's typical Prince. Why does everybody have a bum? You know, I'm not joking. Simon Barnett on More FM sometime around 1992. Okay, moving on. Five minutes already, good Lord. Little Red Corvette. Okay, this song. Finish praising 1999 to the heavens. You're about to get the same for Little Red Corvette. Little Red Corvette is a perfect piece of pop Americana. It's a Prince staple, yet it's also one of those Heartland songs. Remember in the last videos I was talking about how Prince was listening to Bruce Springsteen and Bob Seger a lot, and he just wanted to write a song that would cross over to white America. Now, in my chart videos, I know none of you have watched that shit, except you, Mr. Ants. I mean, you get a pass, because I know you've watched it. Good man. Um, I basically said that the song basically connected Prince with white America, and um, it's about cars, of course, and it's also about cars as a sex metaphor. I mean, apparently Prince wrote it in the back of um, Lisa's Edsel. But anyway, the song's about a woman. She's too fast, you know. She wants to have sex with Prince, basically. Prince isn't quite so willing. I mean, there'd be a lot of these sort of femme fatale type songs. Darling Nikki's another good one. Basically, um, she, she's got a pocket full of Trojans, some of them used, so basically, you know, there's a good chance Prince is going to catch an STD out of this, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's got some wonderful lines, you know, believe it or not. I still like that part I played, but what really sold the song was that joyous pop chorus. There is a lot of pop going in that song. The reason it sounds a lot like 1999 the songs because it was recorded only about two weeks beforehand. I mean, apparently when Prince handed the album over to Warner's in the middle of August, they said, wow, this is a great set. I can definitely see some hit potential with Little Red Corvette and Delirious. But what we need is a song titled Gear, and that was 1999. And, and I think also, too, Prince tried the free part harmony, but then, like with 1999, he did it down to single tracks. But you can hear a part in that song. You can clearly hear Dez singing in the background alongside Prince. So again, I think Dez, Lisa and Prince were all basically doing the main vocal chops. And again, it was like I said, with time, you had the, the whole performance effect. Not only did you have to be playing an instrument, you had to be singing and you had to be stepping on stage. It was a high energy routine. Little Red Corvette, again, as you know, massive hit. Good reason why. Absolutely amazing song. There's a, now the edit cuts out the part where it goes, And the ride is sass, but you must be a limousine. Great soulful breakdown. Again, all these songs, I mean, they're okay in the edit forms, but you need the album, you need to hear them in their full glory, basically. Now we're going to move into the third song on the album. Again, both songs, 10 out of 10, I mean, what am I saying? There's, of course, one, another one of my favourites. Just slow down, I'm going to explode, and girl, I've got a lot. That's not exactly pop lyrics, is it? I mean, some of us can see what's going on in this song, Delirious. This is about a girl, basically. Okay, really? Another Prince song about a girl? Surely not, but anyway... The girl in this song is just driving Prince bananas. He's absolutely delirious over how much he wants to either love her or do her, possibly both. Basically, you know, his temperature's running hot. He just cannot stop, you know. You know, he loses all self-control whenever she's near, basically. This woman is zapping the synapses of his mind. You know, he's just so deep in love with her. He just really wants to get with this girl, you know what I mean? And it's just a wonderful song. I mean, again, absolutely beautiful, hook-driven melodies. You know, I mean, the melodies in the song are amazing. I mean, again, like Little Red Corvette in 1999, it's got that whole sort of pop construction running the way through. Unlike those two songs, so we've kind of lost Dez and Lisa and Jill. It's basically just Prince alone in the studio. And as we said in that last video, I mean, about the uh, making of the album, it was recorded a wee bit earlier on in the piece back in May. So it's a bit earlier, but still it was made at Sunset Sound, so it's still got that full rich sound. You've got the Lins, you've got... Okay, it's a very good um, sort of, you know... Besides the Lynn, there's a very good sort of... Doo, 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 doo. I mean, I don't know the names of instruments or musical chords or anything, so I'm sorry I'm a bit daft in the music department. But it's some type of synthesizer. I love it. I think it might be an Oberheim or a Theolite or something. But it really it really ties the song together. I mean, not only are the songs well written and they're well sung, I mean, the absolute, you know, basically rhythm section in this music is just beyond amazing. I mean, he was just... He, he proved he had mastered the art of singing and the art of basically playing everything and just making music. I mean, the first four albums all brought it together. Everything just comes together and explodes on 1999. And as those three songs, first three songs, side one of the um, two album, basically, set, you know, all three of them, absolutely amazing, blinders from start to finish. Then we move into some of the less pleasing stuff, and it's still pleasing, but we're going to play some made a decision. This is going to be two videos. I'm going to stop this one, when I finish up with Automatic, and I'm going to do the last five songs and um, a couple of the B-sides in the second video. So, this is Let's Pretend We're Married, and again, this is an absolutely lightning-in-a-bottle moment song, basically. I absolutely love it. 
I mean, okay, you guys are going to get probably sick of me here saying I love it, it's a great song, blah, 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 cliche, 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 praise Prince to the roof. But I'm not making it up. These songs, I mean, some people have commented that one of the best things on my videos, they see true emotions of joy for me. And I mean, Jay did a wonderful video a while ago about how, you know, how Prince is like a big, it really cheers him up, you know, it really makes life a lot more bearable for him. And I, really, it is the same for me. And I mean, when I put 1999 on the whole album, it just really gives me a big smile, basically, because the music is just so great. Now, back to what's going on on Let's Pretend We Married. Basically, what's happened? Prince's girl has left him. Poor baby lamb. You know, what is he going to do? You know, I mean, no, it's Prince. You know, he can pull another one just like that, basically. But anyway, Prince meets this attractive woman. Shit, really? You know, Prince never meets an attractive woman? And that's, just before I go any further, I just have to say, one thing this album does come down a bit is that when you compare it to Prince's later music, the, the, the topics on these songs don't go much beyond the sexual side of the relationships. I mean, Prince hasn't really discovered love yet. You don't really hear love apart from I love you, you know, when someone's trying to get some, you know, like, I love you, baby, let's do it. You know, until you get into Purple Rain. Purple Rain, you stand to find love, and it's not really until Parade when he realises that there's more to more to love than just sex. You know, when he, the songs are actually about how hard he falls for, basically, you know, Kirsten Scott Thomas's character. But so, it's just, just sex. This is a very carnal song. There's a very frenetic beat in the background, you know, the, the limbs going faster, the synths are going faster, there's a, there's a big bass powering through it. The drumming is amazing. I'm sure that's Prince, but I could be wrong. I suspect it might even be um, Morris on the drums, but the drumming track is amazing. And uh, basically, the song's getting more frenetic as basically Prince's heart rate is increasing. So again, he's still delirious from the last girl. And basically, you know, the girl's obviously quite proper, so she doesn't want to have sex with him because they're not married, you know, so Prince says, why not, let's just pretend and do it anyway, basically. And finally, about halfway through the song, after, let's pretend we're married, ooh, ooh, we baby, I need a mouth like yours, dun, dun, dun. help you forget the girl. It's falsetto, again, amazing. It's a good, great marriage of falsetto and deeper voice, the type of Prince cuts I absolutely love when Prince is just doing his whole vocal range. But like I said, my, my favourite song, Adore. I mean, that's just basically a Prince vocal extravaganza. There's no way to describe it. But this is also very similar. And finally, about five minutes into the song, Prince can't stand it anymore. I mean, not only does he want to have sex, but he wants to sincerely fuck the taste out of her mouth. Can you relate? And then after that, after a, a sort of like a synthesized breakdown, a lot of do 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 Oh, oh, and then you hear him in the background. Oh, oh, I want to fuck you, darn it. You know, and then like all this other shit, he goes, do, do, whatever you heard about me is true. I change the rules and do what I want to do. I'm in love with God, it's the only way. Because you and I know we got to die someday. You think I'm crazy? You're probably right. But we're going to have fun every month. So I'm going to have fun every motherfucking night. You like to fight? You're a double drag fool. I'm off to another world. How about you? So even after screwing her, he's still talking about God and the apocalypse. Prince is all for reincarnation at this stage. And there's a good reason why the song only got to number 52. I mean, he didn't even put, like, a nice beat on it. He put Irresistible Bitch, which is a song about, you know, calling up this woman's house in a deeper voice after the session, not at home. If you think I'm a fool, we're a fool for that silly line. Put down all your money, honey. You win, you win every time. Irresistible Bitch. And there's, like, a later remix of it. And it goes, you sexy motherfucker. <laughs> you know, which is quite funny. So that's Let's Pretend We're Married. Now we're moving into another absolutely lightning and a bloody... Bottle song, okay. Another brilliant song. No, killer cliche. DMSR stands for Dance, Music, Sex, Romance. Basically, that's basically Prince's manifesto at the time. I mean, we've left the girls alone for five seconds. Now he's talking about partying, getting down on the dance floor, and not only that, Prince is actually teaching white people how to clap on time and how to dance in rhythm, you know. All the white people on the one now. Then he goes, All the Negroes, you know, and all. It's just silly you know but i love it great stomp absolutely amazing you know synthesizer lines underpinning everything you know it's just hilarious um i think it's one of those songs that's kind of like saying to all the white people hey welcome to the world of prince you know here you are you want to get into my music go learn some rhythm you know stop watching a door cream's videos because he's, he's another white boy who's got no bloody rhythm basically well mostly white you know marys don't really count as black you know and i've definitely lost any color i had a month ago that's for damn sure but anyway so this the song, I mean, it's just insane. I mean, it's just the most amazing party jam you've got. Like, again, let's hear that again, just that, that synth noise. That's right. Do, 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 and you hear like the just, do, quite noise. It's just amazing. Um, It's basically, you know, it's a manifesto song. It's very much like Uptown in a type of way, you know. It's basically Prince, and this is my agenda. I came here to party, I came here to have sex, and I came here to make a whole bunch of music, basically. 
and I'm going to dance around and shake my ass on stage so 30 years later I'm going to end up having a hip operation and going on dangerous medication that'll kill me. So there you are. That's Dance Music Sex Romance. And there's another one of those songs that kind of runs to its natural length, like um, Let's Pretend We're Married. It goes for about seven or eight minutes, and it goes on and on, but it doesn't matter because if you're out there shaking your butt on the dance floor, I mean, that song could go on forever, pretty much. Now, one more song before I end this puppy. Okay, another big dance song, which was left off the shorter versions of the album. This song is hilarious. I'm going to talk about the video. Just tell me what to do. So you are automatic, okay. Automatic was taped quite early on in the piece back in March or April of '82. Okay, automatic is again, it's about women and sex, but this time he's absolutely besotted by a woman. It doesn't matter what she says or does, he's automatically a fool for her, pretty much, you know. She automatic meaning like you tell me to do something, I'll do it straight away, pretty much, you know. It's automatic, baby, you know. And it's a great song. Um again, you heard that synth running through it. I mean the Lynn drums and the synths are going through it again. Okay, some amazing vocals from Prince, which is ninety percent of the time he's basically singing in his deeper voice. The other thing you might hear in that song too is there's um Jill and Lisa singing the vocals on that song. And Jill, there was a stage, you know, like with all the videos like Jill and Lisa were like, you know, playing on the keyboards and like doing some suggestive lesbian type, pseudo lesbian, you know, two girls getting it on for Prince to draw over type thing. And as you know, that would soon end once Wendy ent entered the picture. It's just great. Um it's one of those songs that really runs on, it's like nine and a half minutes, but again, like with um, DMSI, I don't really care how long it runs on for because it's just fucking brilliant, part of my language. I mean, Automatic, okay, the funniest thing about Automatic, and this will crack you guys up, I showed an image of it in my last video, you know, the neglected one about the charts. Basically, it's a video which shows Prince performing on stage. Prince is wearing nothing on his torso except some straps and some leather daddy pants. He's got on this weird sort of SS-looking type, you know, Air Commander's hat. He's in bondage get up basically, and he's singing on stage, there's steam swirling around, and then there's Lisa and Wendy dressed, I mean sorry, no, Lisa and Jill dressed up as dominatrixes, and what happens is they come over to Prince and the lines in the song goes, I'm sorry, we're going to have to torture you now, and it's just hilarious, what happens is they grab Prince, they basically chain him to a brass bed which is spinning around on stage, I'm not making this shit up, I swear. It's on YouTube, the automatic video, you got to watch it, it is so kinky, it is so hilarious. And then what happens is they start whipping him, like with a cat and nine tails, and they start putting their cigarettes out on him, and Prince is wincing in pain, go, and Prince is going, don't torture me. It's just, and then at the end it's just like a whole lot of guitar feedback and simps die down to the natural conclusion of the song. It's just funny. I absolutely love it. So that's the first part of the 1999 review, I hope you enjoyed it so far. Part two, we're going to talk about all the songs from Something in the Water Doesn't Compute through to International Lover. I mean, Jay has already done an excellent, amazing review of International Lover. And uh, like Jay, I'm borrowing from I'm trying to actually talk about more about what's going on in the songs, basically, as well as saying what I feel about them. And I'm trying to, like Mr. Ants, trying to get deep into the musical signatures, but I mean, I can tell the way that Jay and Mr. Ants, they must obviously play music because they know music very well. And they even know, I mean, even Prince's friend is leaving me for dirt because, I mean, he's, like, picked up that guitar and he started playing it. I mean, like, my fat fingers can't play anything, basically. As you can, I mean, look at them. I mean, I got told I'll never learn the guitar with, with sausage fingers like these. And I've lost 15 kgs, and look at them. That ring's been stuck on there for about 10 years. Okay, so there you are. May you all live to see the dawn. Please have more than 20 views after three days.